Guys, JPR Tech here, the Puerto Rican, living in Japan, talking about tech, photography, videography, and all the good tech around our lives, trying to make the best use out of it for cheap or better yet, free. Now, the, today's topic is about software. Can software make our gear better? Now, as a full-time EOSM Magic Lantern user, I can agree that software does help me use or squeeze out the best quality we can get out of this $150 camera shooting raw videos. But what about in the editing software side of things? Can software really improve the image quality even more? Well, let's find out. Roll that intro. So guys, before we get started with anything, I just want to give a huge shout out and a thank you to the folks over at Dehancer for giving me the opportunity to take a look at their software, their plugin for videos as well as photos. And yeah, I just want to say thank you. And to give you guys a heads up, since they did send me the plugin to test out for a month to try out, they didn't require anything nice for me to say. They just said, give us your honest opinion. So in this video, I'm going to give you my honest opinion as a basic novice user uh, with DaVinci Resolve. So that is also another disclaimer. I'm not a pro colorist. I'm not a professional videographer, but I do this as a hobby and as a, as a side job. And with my hands-on experience shooting with raw DNG files and S-Log as well as F-Log with Fujifilm, I'm going to give you my personal experience and show you my workflow on the things that I found out using this Dehancer plugin. Now, for those of you that don't know what Dehancer is, it's basically a plugin that turns your digital footage, whether it's stills or videos, turns them into film. Guys, just as a spoiler alert, it's just pretty crazy that it, it does exactly that. It's almost like you're developing film. When I'm working with DaVinci Resolve, that's how I feel. I feel like I'm actually developing film and you'll see in the workflow I, I get really excited just thinking about it because it was pretty cool pretty neat to see how all the different tools in Dehancer help me turn my footage into something very film like this plugin works with capture one lightroom photoshop affinity so no matter what major editing software you're using it's most likely supported by it now today we're going to be focusing on davinci resolve so if you're in interested in any of that stuff that i just mentioned then stick around to the end of the video in this video i'm not going to be focusing too much detail on what does what I'm basically just going to show you the workflow that I've been using or doing, learning these past couple of weeks with my DNG files as well as my Fujifilm log files and also the 709, the shooting with Eterna and Classic Chrome. Anything you shoot with, most likely supported by Dehancer. So I'm just going to show you how I use it in my workflow. And if it works for you, hit a thumbs up and let's get started. 
So guys, here we are in DaVinci Resolve and we're about to get started with this, uh, showing you my workflow. So let's go ahead and dig in, go to the color page. So you can see that I have a bunch of files. We got some DNG raw goodness from the EOS M. We also got some XH1 footage that as you all know, is just an 8-bit 4K camera. Well, first let's get digging with the raw footage for the decoding. I'm going to leave it as is the clip is says rec 709. That's what the MLB app exports uh, with your raw footage. And we're just going to add a note and throw in our Dehancer Pro plugin. Yeah. And you might be shocked to see that at first. And I was too, I'm like, Whoa, what is this? This is like a, what a toy effect. It, it, Dehancer guys, um, <laughs> in my personal opinion, it would be nice if all the plugins were shut off or unchecked. And then as we check them, we can see how they're affecting the image down below. I don't know. That's just an observation I thought, because anyway, this is what we're going to do. We're going to turn everything off. There you go. Everything's unchecked. So if we turn off the node, it shouldn't affect the clip. Now, if I'm working with DNGs, I'll leave the source as is because it is a Rec 709. Here you could play with the temperature or tints, or you could actually do that later after you print the film and you see how it affects the colors. You could readjust, recolor all your temps and tints as need to. So we're going to skip this part. The film developer, I don't touch it so much. That is if we need to boost something such as the contrast or the saturation film. Here we go. This way things get really nice. Um, Enabling that, we see that our footage changed, right? So off and on. So it muted a lot of that magenta color that was just glowing air everywhere on that Rec. 709. It looked really ugly, but now it looks more filmic. It looks very, uh, if I can say, it's almost like a Japanese style movie, you know, where the tints are a little bit to the greenish and the bluish color. Very cool. Really awesome. But you know what? We're going to change the profile to something a little bit more balanced and pleasing for me, in my opinion, to my eyes. I like the Ultramax 400. You saw how it affected everything became a little bit more subtle than this heavy contrasty one. So Ultramax is really nice. I also like the Portra 400. It looks again. Look at that. Very greenish colors is I don't know. Maybe I'm just influenced here with Japan TV. But yeah, Japan TV tends to have those bluish greenish tints. So we're going to keep the Ultramax 400 and you could play around with the push pull the, of this film profile, which affects the color. So if it's too blue for you, you could always turn it a little bit warmer with this level right here. But I'm going to leave it as is because I like it. I love this uh, blue and green we're getting. And then up next is our expand. We can expand the black points and the white points. And that's just in case you're clipping or in this case, I'm not clipping at all. So we might want to increase our white point to give it a little bit more of a pop and the black points. If you want to make the shadows really grayish, kind of like an Instagram filter, or you could give it a more contrasty, heavy look, but this is not contrast by the way, it's just the black points then. So I'm going to leave the black point at zero because up next, we're going to print the footage. This is like printing on paper. It's going to be the final look, how it looks. We have different prints or film simulations. I could say, I don't know if they're called simulation, but profiles, film profiles that we can select from. There's just a handful. And my personal favorites are the Fujifilm and Kodak. Both look amazing. So let's just start off with Fujifilm. I'm a little biased with Fujifilm as a Fujifilm user. Let's enable it and see how it looks. Skadoosh. There we go. Now we got Japanese TV on our hands. Looks amazing. Of course, the tree got a little bit clipped. So we're going to raise our black points a little bit lower. Just a tad. And our exposure. We're going to raise it up a little bit and there we go. We got better overall exposure. Now in this print tab or tool, we can actually target the white point so we can actually select and it will affect the overall white balance because we are changing what the white point is in this clip. So I'm going to leave it as it is because I love the greenish and the bluish tint Fujifilm has. But just to show you guys, let's see what Kodak does to the same clip. You see, it's a little warmer. Looks amazing. Looks great, especially for a beach shot. This is great. But you know, we're in Japan. It's not that hot. It's not tropical. We're going to go to Fujifilm. And again, you can control the contrast and the de color density here. So it's just 
very, very slight adjustments that the Hanser does. And that's what I love about it. It's not just a plugin that you slap on and it's like a, like a filter that you could tell is fake. No, this is like real, really affecting our raw files, our footage, our clips. So it's just an awesome mixture of ingredients that just output into something that looks very filmic. But nothing can be called film until it has grain because, you know, film has grain. So let's go ahead and enable that. And right off the bat, it is strong. Look at that. If we zoom in, woo, that is strong too strong for my personal taste so you know what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower that and i always do anyway i like iso 60 uh oh, sorry the lowest iso but also at 65 millimeter which it keeps all the detail for the qr code as well as uh, the leaves so we keep detail but still have grain so let's go ahead and play with the enable button here uncheck it and see when it's off yeah it looks very clean the sky's smooth and the leaves too, but when we enable it, there's the greens artifacts on the sky and the leaves, and it just looks very cinematic. Sorry about the cliche. All right, Heliation and Bloom, they're very similar, but different. Bloom, I'm gonna go with Bloom because it's the easiest to explain, it just adds a glow. Look at this, when we turn it on, oh, let's zoom in again and show you, turn on the Bloom. Yeah, I like to tone it down as well, so every, most of the settings, I turn them down to the minimal settings. Haliation, on the other hand, let's check it out. So when I enable it, did you see that? All right, look at the A, the top of the A. Haliation is it's like a, a glow, but at the same time, it adds characteristic of a old vintage prime lens. So look at that, we add chromatic aberration. Where all photographers and videographers are fighting to get rid of it, we're gonna add it. Yeah, but you don't have to. If you don't want to, you could just take it off. But in my case, I'm gonna take it off because, yeah, I don't wanna add some color tints and radiation on this scene right here. That's pretty much it. We're pretty much done. That's how my workflow is. Really simple, right? And those are the settings that I basically use. Okay, guys. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the hands are affect different cameras. So, okay, here we got a really rare clip. This one is a ProRes. Uh, so it's already in a log file. And if we add the edit from before, it's going to look funky, right? Look at that. It looks weird because we have to change the input source. So instead of Rec 709, we can choose a camera and I'm gonna go to our profile that we added in the MLB app, which is a Sony camera. And I'm gonna choose the full frame. Or how about FX3? Can we do get away? Ooh, that actually looks nice. FX3 with the S Gamma 3 Cine. Look at that, beautiful. Look at those colors and the details, what? It's a little bit brownish, yellowish for my taste. So again, we can play with the target white up here and or you have the temp and temp in the Hanser Pro. So you don't even have to leave the Hanser Pro to do some edits in your clip. You could use the actual built in tools that they give you and they give us enough to fix so many things. Last but not least, let's check out some 8-bit footage. So here is my Fujifilm X-H1. How does it do? Oh, it's not bad, actually. What? All right, hang on. Let me fix the exposure. So go to a white point, bring it back up. Look at that. You save all the clipping. Doesn't clip at all. And look at that. It actually looks pretty nice. Hey, hang on. Let's turn off the Hanser Pro. Turn it off and on. You see that? It looks so nice. Oh man, this looks awesome. How about we fix the tone, make it a little bit cooler? Because I don't know, I'm biased to the cooler colors. So there you go. We're going to leave it at that. Actually, let's make it a little bit warm. Our, our tint, make it a little bit more reddish, orangey, right around there. Because we got some wood colors that would look nice. There you go. Nice. Oh man, this is looking really nice. Let's try the same edits from the last clip. Ooh, that looks good. Maybe temperature is a little bit too cool. There we go. Bring the Sakura back. Perfect. Next clip. This is straight from the X-H1. Classic Chrome. But we're going to add the Hanser Pro. Ooh, look at that. We 
Uh, did you notice what the bloom does? Oh, this is all straight bloom. Let's have some haliation. Oh, ho, 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 ho. yeah, definitely. For this scene, we're gonna leave the haliation on. So look at that. So let's do again. No dehancer. Dehancer. Oh, look at the look at the river, the the, the creek with the bluish tint and the oh man, you see. The Hanser Pro is not just a filter that you just slap on on a clip. It enhances your image. Look at this crispy 8-bit footage. Just too crispy, right? Dehancer ties. Bam! Now that looks a lot better. With the haliation and the bloom, it helps soften things up a lot. All right, let's go to another clip. Oh, this is an indoor shot. It's not much different because it's so muted. Anyway, but yeah, it looks really really organic look at the sky how it brings back the sky the blue did you see that look at that no plug-in plug-in look at that dynamic range Woo! look at that we can bring back the shadow look how clean they are you know it doesn't add any noise whatsoever oh man this is just awesome i'm i'm sorry i'm having fun here by myself editing but i hope you guys are too i hope you guys are enjoying watching what we can get out of this plugin. and again this is too warm let's turn it greener yeah let's leave it at linear because yeah it was just too yellowy for my taste so yeah we're just gonna leave this at linear how about endura glossy paper what does that do oh we got the green bags oh <laughs> yes oh we should do this for the retreating park hang on hang on guys i'm sorry this is so long but you, you gotta admit this is fun just testing different settings here and there oh yeah this is gonna be nice in retreating so let me add this save this to my memory presets and let's go to retreating where is it here it is and here we go three two one skadoosh Ooh, nice and green okay this is cool i'm having too much fun here guys sorry um but anyways as you can see just looks awesome did you notice guys i'm editing this on my macbook pro because i'm doing the tutorial i'm recording the screen i'm recording myself with my iphone as well my macbook is working really hard but still it's able to use the plugin nice and smoothly not so much lag of course if i were to play back it's gonna lag but um yeah with just a laptop we're able to edit on the with the dehancer plugin so that was my workflow i hope you found it useful if you did I really appreciate your smashing the thumbs up, liking the video, and sharing so other people can see what an awesome plugin Dehancer is and what it can do and how it can enhance our workflow using DNG raw files with the EOS M. So with that said, how much will this set you back? Upfront, if you just wanna pay for the whole pro set, which includes all the tools that I went over and so many more that I didn't even touch on, it's gonna set you back $449 for a lifetime use. That sounds quite a bit for a piece of plugin, but it's not just a plugin because, yes, even though DaVinci Resolve, which is a lot cheaper at $295, I believe it retails for, it does have some plugins that you could use that are very similar, like Haliation and Bloom. It's all integrated into DaVinci Resolve. You even got grain. But the difference with the Hanser is that we have so much freedom to tweak things and just adjust things. And that's the beauty about the plugin of the Hanser. It's just straight focus, center on turning digital footage into film like. Then again, if 449 is too steep for you guys, they do have a light version, which I think has is the sweet spot between price and the tools that you're getting because you're getting all the major tools that you really need to get you going. And I don't know if you guys noticed a lot of my recent videos, I have been using this Dehancer plugin. So if you want to see more of what this plugin can do, check some of my recent videos that I uploaded. I got like four or five videos that all use the Dehancer plugin. So you could check it out well guys that's about it thank you guys so much for sticking to the end you guys rock you guys are awesome and i i want to give a special shout out to all of you commentators the people that leave feedbacks in the comment section down below the feedbacks are really important to help me see what i'm what i'm doing right or wrong i can correct things in the future and also just 
make sure that the content I'm putting out there you guys are liking you guys are benefiting from it because that's basically what we are all here on YouTube right uh, we're all looking for ways to improve the tech in our lives so if this video was helpful for you guys I would really appreciate again smashing the like button and thank you guys so much for watching happy cheese <music>